<clears throat> Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will. I'm joined by my schmo host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. I've got my sass jacket on. Sass jacket. Whenever it's, I, it's cold again. Well, whenever I wear this jacket, there's just a lot of... And yes... You know what pisses me off more than anything? Second winter. 67 degrees and then like all of a sudden 32. It's not even, it's more than half off. It was 80. It's like an like old Friday. Navy sale when you don't want it to be. Right. Cole's cash. Yeah, man. I, I didn't got, buy this with Cole's cash. What'd you just pour us? No. So this is the uh, Chris P sample of the week. <laughs> okay. And this is a Nelson Brothers Honey Cask 2023, 107.2 proof. Oh. So I thought we'd uh, get a little sweetness to start our Monday. Oh, um, it smells good. So this is the Bell Mead, the, the poor man's Bell Mead honey. Well, they don't call it Belmedia. I understand. Right. I mean, I don't know if it's poor man's. I think they still charge the same amount. Well, if I man, still you're don't, rich. No, you think I that's poor man. I still don't understand why they got rid of that brand. Here's what's going to happen. I disagree. With I'm going to wait 20 years. Okay, I'm going to do what everybody's doing. Yeah, you're going to change your name. No, I'm going. <laughs> no, I'm going to wait 20 years, and then I'm going to be like, mm, nobody using that trademark. Bam, my brand. Yeah. And then I'm going to release. Is 20 years the cutoff? Do you know? I have no idea. You're right. I guess I could ask Dixon Dedman about it, the whole when, Kentucky Owl thing. Yeah, when's it a dormant trademark, Dixon? <laughs> I mean, I feel like that could be three years. I don't know. I don't know the, the statute of limitations on that, Greens. It's not murder. That's There's no statute of limitations on that. Some, Okay, some true crime trademark. Oh yeah, man. I um true trademark crime. Did you do anything fun this weekend? I went and played kickball with Lauren's family. You used to be a kickball fanatic. I so I was in you a were in a league. couple leagues. Yeah, if I don't. Yeah, and with our buddy Aaron too. He um yeah yeah we we won the championship in the Nashville area yeah. one year. Then you won the Nashville championship. If you say it real fast, it sounds like you won a national championship. Yeah, national championship. National championship. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did. We had a Nashville champion. Yeah. Um and it I mean it was it was a blast. And I was the pitcher. And you, and it's not just you roll the ball. Right. You you kind of do this like sidearm spin thing and it's got to bounce at least two times. Got a little wind up action. Yeah. It's like tennis. And then like you can't just hit it. You gotta serve it. Some of the like, and by the way, these are athletic women on these teams. Like okay. straight up. They're, and you were the only male? Is that what you're getting? No, at? like typically, like it was just it, it was normal to just roll it. Yeah. You know, for them instead of sure. th throwing the crazy pitches. Yeah. It's just a nice gesture. Right. I don't know why we did that. No, nah, because uh, you're sexist. Well, I didn't. Yeah, that's why. I was just and doing misogyny over here. I was just doing what everybody else was doing, which apparently his middle is name, sexist. His middle name is misogyny. If you look it up, it's. <laughs> I it's love a good massage. Matthew Grease Misogyny Geisler. You know that that could be a baby name. Yeah. <laughs> misogyny or Grease Misogyny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in it this would take day a and age to explain. Yeah, it's like why are you doing it? It's like we're trying to tear down the patriarchy. But why? You named it misogyny. We're trying to we're trying to dilute the name. Okay, speaking of patriarch. Okay, well, let, let me let me just go back. All right, you played some. I, I rolled it. I rolled it gently one time for this Auburn collegiate softball athlete. Yeah, mistake. And she picked that thing up and she pegged me with that ball. She had an arm <laughs> and a half. She's like, she don't throw me this crap. She basically did. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, did she do that to everybody? Because all the teams did that. Anyway, speaking of patriarch, I was going to say, speaking of Auburn collegiate athletes, oh. SEC champs, oh, okay. by the time this is going, I mean, we're well on our way to the NCAA championship. Well on it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well on it. Speaking of patriarchy. Though, all right, let's hear it. What are your theories? <laughs> oh, oh. Kate Middleton. <laughs> I don't think that's the patriarchy, but sure. What is it? The monarchy. <laughs> oh, that's a monarchy? <laughs> yeah. Well, any a patriarchy is like a, a, a male dominated society. Oh, yeah, monarchy is is royalty. 
I am today years old. <laughs> you thought when people were sitting down with I just patriarchy. thought you were a pa- if you're a patiarch, it just meant like you're a pa- like a like a highly renowned patriot. Well, if or you're something. if you're a, pa- a patriot, no, a patriarch would be like a male like figurehead. Like matriarch. Like a dad. Is is a maternal. Yes. Pater familius. Like a dad. Yeah. Pa- pa- well, that's the Latin root. Pater is is father. Pater. Something like that. Okay. Close enough. Close enough for this audience. <laughs> Sounds like the way to say dad and cutter. Uh, right. Oh, man. I was watching the news the other day. No, no, we are. Yeah. No, we're no, not diverting. All, no, I was watching no. the news the other day, and guy said uh, cutter even more appropriate, and I've never been more happy in my life. Cutter. <laughs> <laughs> like they just went for it with the well, you full have to. G. I took Arabic. Oh, I loved it. In, in <laughs> no, linguistics. no, you took linguistics in which you learned about Arabic. You did not take Arabic. I pretty much took Arabic. <laughs> I was semi fluent like the first two weeks, <laughs> and then like by week three, I just I got bored with yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, I, let me go ahead and just talk about the internet for a second. Do it. it, it talk about the internet. The F, the, we can cancel the FBI. FBI, you're out like, of there. Like politically cancel them or like cancel their their contract. Just the, we don't need we don't need to re up that contract. Yeah, you that's just how it works. post whatever answers you need on the internet, uh-huh. and these detectives out there they will figure this out. Oh right, we've got the Internet Bureau of Investigation. Yes, IBI, IBI, which also sounds like you got to go take a poo poo. Oh, you got IBI? Oh yeah, real bad. Ate some spicy food. IBI's acting up. I don't like how you say poo poo. <laughs> Take a poo poo. I got. To, I have a four year old son. We're trying to. Right. You know, I know. Deal. No, with, I, I get. It. Deal with the the poo poo situation. <laughs> I get it. You you say things that you never thought you'd say. Yeah. Right. Poo poo. Poo poo. In college, I'll tell you what I called it. No. Family show. All right. Well, that was that was a great start. Yeah, that was. A <laughs> this great is start. a great whiskey. Thank you, Chris P. Once it's again good. for it's producing. A little sweet for me. First half of the I, show. It is good. I like it. You know, I um I tied a new fly pattern over the weekend. Gave some to our, our, okay, our this is today. this is getting this is getting dumb <laughs> because I'm, I'm uh, doing this so I can make a clip for my Instagram whiskey bugger. <laughs> well, you should. You absolutely should. Now, yeah. when you say you there's so many different ties that you do patterns. and all I see is oh, patterns? Yeah, they're they're it's a fly pattern. Like righty tidy lefty loosey. You just alternate them. That's exactly how you do it. You're basically a professional. Like figure eight infinity sign. Yeah. So I made a crawfish pattern. It looks okay. pretty awesome. Use some rabbit fur. It's got two little rabbit fur danglies up here that look like uh, claws when it's in the water. Let me see that. All right. I'll show it to you. So essentially, it's got like this this dumbbell eye at the bottom that helps it go sink down. And then, like, see the... Um, okay. That looks like a dragonfly. Well, n- well, it'll be no, no, bottom sorry. down. Is it a dragon? No. Dragonfly. It look well. You know what it looks like. It's a crawfish. It mm, it does. It's a crawfish pattern. That is not a crawfish. Uh, the fish will beg to. That differ. looks like a praying mantis mated with <laughs> a horsefly. Oh man, that's what that looks like. Oh. You, we should post this praying horsefly. I'll insert I mean, it on the video. People can see it. It's right there. I'm showing it for you. Okay. Got, yeah. Look. See, this is the bottom, and then you got these little dangling. Wait, 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 wait. Which one's the bottom? The eyes float. Help it float down to the bottom. Okay, so crawfish swim backwards? I don't know how crawfish swim. I just know what they look like right before you throw them into the boiling water, and they just kind of, you know, flail about. <laughs> I haven't seen them in the river swimming. I, I mean, I've caught them. Okay, that's Australian. Australian? Flail about. Flail about? Yeah, I know. We're like, going in the river to discover some crawfish that flail about. And you dump them in live, and then they just kind of freak out. But that's not, I'm sure that's not their normal swim pattern. So when you catch mud bugs, yeah. essentially, because yeah. you're in the river. That's what you call a, a Georgia craw, a okay. river crawfish is a mud bug. Okay, now. so you didn't do crawfish. You, you tied a mud bug. I mean, it's in the crawfish family, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. They they all look like I mean they're all a crayfish, crayfish. Um, I don't know what I was going to say to that, but it was something good, and I lost mud, my train of thought. Mud bugs. You tied a mud bug. You said you tied a mud bug. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know. It was great though. Let me go ahead and tell you something. I was going to say the most profound thing that you've heard in a while. Typically, you do. That's where I get. Oh yeah, here it is. My profound. So when you catch 
mud bugs, do you keep them alive so that you get to see them flail about when you cook them? Well, first of all, I'm not catching river mud bugs, but no, you, you. I used to as a kid. No, but you didn't eat them. I'm talking about like crawfish you eat. You're right. Like New Orleans crawfish are bigger, meatier, and you want to. Yeah, yeah, they're. <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> kind the of worth the hassle. <laughs> okay, I love them. But, <laughs> I mean, if they were, I mean, yeah, mud yeah, bugs, you, that's worthless. Yeah, you want to dump them in live, kind of like a lobster. Right. You don't want a dead one. Oh, I was just sitting there thinking about flailing about. Well, I mean, yeah, because you're dumping them in the boiling water live. Like Will coming back from the river with like a bag of goldfish, except for the Got gold, <laughs> except for the goldfish, they look like roaches. Yeah, and I just want to see them flail about. I, you don't eat these; you just boil them for fun. Will tied a river roach. Yeah. That's what he tied. <laughs> that, by the way, it looks like a horsefly mated with a praying. You know what? I bet a fish will eat it though. Do you call it praying mantis or praying mantis? Praying, praying mantis. Yeah, praying mantis. Yeah, I mean, it, I think the technical name is praying right but i mean when when you don't have time for the extra letters you just say praying you know what i don't understand though i think it's p-r-e-y right no, no i don't think so i think it's, it's a, a praying be, because it's because of how it holds its hands well but it does pray well it's a double entendre oh <laughs> wait those aren't negative well they are mm, they're both Some you seen could those bugs? consider prayer as a negative <laughs> oh you have problems you, you do have problems you said weird things last week too <laughs> Some help, um, <laughs> you but know. I, I was gonna I ask say for forgiveness, but they have the daggum praying mantis, aren't they? Like real, uh, the women are aggressive after well, no, after well, the no, men. The women eat the heads off the yeah, men after yeah, after they, they do the deed, well, right? Yeah. But you know what? Had it coming. If, if <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Sometimes you say, "Listen, I'll let you eat my head off." If we can, you know, <laughs> that's how desperate go down the, male, the male praying mantis are. Like, you can do whatever you want to me. After <laughs> yeah. You can eat my head off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll let you bite that thing clear off. And praying, you can bump ugly. Praying mantis goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they do their little. Uh, do they spit? Okay. Do they spit? I don't think so. Do you think they like whiskey? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a bug that drink whiskey. Do you think insects or. Rodents like whiskey more. This is an honest question. Just flies always end up in when you're outside. A hundred percent. I've never been sitting around and have a mouse plop into my glass. But I will say this. If you're going to die, you might as well be drunk doing it. That's how I feel about the fruit flies. Yeah, fruit flies are like, I've got kind of a pointless existence. The fruit's not really doing it for me. I mean, most of the time they're eating, like, I feel like rotten fermented fruit. So maybe that's just what they're accustomed to. I'm going to go Alcoholic insects. I'm going to go ahead and tell all the guys out there whose wives are like, why do you have so much whiskey? I want you to take the crappiest bottle that you have. I want you to put it in a drinking glass, and I want you to set it in the kitchen where these fruit flies are. Right. I need you to go to bed, wake up in the morning, and point to that glass and say, see, babe? Dual purpose. Dual purpose. Dual purpose, because there's going to be about 10 fruit flies just... Yeah, passed out, drunk and in just it. Be like, where's that honey do list? Check. You did it. Check. You did it, sir. Yeah, I'm right. Proud of you. I am proud dude, of you. There, there's a lot done. of things to be proud of right now. Right, especially with these guys with their whiskey and right. the fruit flies. AT and T giving. And $5. just hope that your wife isn't a praying mantis. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't end well for you, my friend. It does not. Oh. I mean, I mean, we get our heads bit off every now and then. Yeah, but figuratively. Figuratively. Not, uh, not literally, my said. Well, I mean, sometimes. Okay. I mean, sometimes the air nibbles can get aggressive. Oh, my gosh. Air nibbles. Ear. Sorry. Uh, I thought you said I, air. I was like. Ear nibble. It's not air if there's teeth to flex. Did I say contact. air? I it meant, sounded like it. And I was like, buddy. Dude, I mean. Air typically uh, implies there's a space between. Space between. You know how you warm up with like the breath behind the ear, and then you just kind of <laughs> nibble a little bit. It sometimes it can just get aggressive, is what I'm saying. Kind of like you know, talking <laughs> 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 about breath warm up. This is I'm throwing e on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I know what it, you're talking about. It, it's like a, it's like one of those um, uh, spark plugs. It's like it's you know, you just gotta. Well, it's like a Nintendo game. You got to blow on it to get it to turn on. Yeah, we could go down the lane with that metaphor if you want a little bit. I don't want to. I think we're done here. I don't want to. Ty, Ty, Ty is on a trampoline 
just jumping up and down, clapping. His like wife's going to think he's trying to kill fruit flies <laughs> he's, with how much clapping he's doing. Well, you can circle back up to her tie later on and Boom. say, let me go ahead and pull out this uh, mulligan whiskey. <laughs> Set it on the counter. Woo! Hot dang. You could also say, <laughs> however many fruit flies are in that by tomorrow morning, it's how many kisses you have to enjoy giving me. Oh, right. Like, yeah. you have to put that ca caveat on it, because sometimes they'll just be like, nah, nah, you know, and just like, right. I guess I have to. And that's how your family but no, like, Yeah, you have to like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, make it believable right? for two seconds. Yeah, not this rubbish that you're doing. All right, great pour, Will. <laughs> and Will Chris. <laughs> yeah, great, great this is a pretty pour, good. Chris P. Pretty good pour. Appreciate you and everything you do for this community. Community. Woo! All right. Hey, if you want to be a Patreon, patron of ours, go to patreon.com slash the podcast to sign up there. Really, really impressing upon people the beauty of which is the town hall level and the virtual bar night level. You get to hang out with us for a good minute. Yeah, sometimes it gets, you know, fun. Yeah, it gets a little sassier than uh, Praying Zoom. Mantis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Wait. know, dude. That's pretty sassy. I mean, we're in. I've got my sassy jacket on. You do, yeah. All right. You should have seen. You should have seen my fleece version. You had a fleece version of the same jacket? No, not this. I mean, the fleece. The fleece version of sass. Oh, I thought you were just wearing a Patagonia earlier, and then you decided to change into that. Oh, the brand. Well, yeah, like a fleece. Well, I thought a Patagonia a for a second was like saying something like a poncho. And I was like, what does a Patagonia look like? Well, regardless of the brand or a type, I'm still, I, that, that question is still valid. Well, anyway, jury's still out on that one. <sighs> I played kickball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the family. Uh, Woo, here we are. With, with the family. Yeah, how'd that go? I'm going to just go ahead and tell you something. Mm -hmm. I need to drink in that environment because as it stands yes. completely sober, my mind moves a lot faster than my body. Oh, yeah. And there was some, so you need to slow the mind down to match the athleticism of the Greeks. Yes, because there were a couple of tumbles that were had. Okay. I missed a couple of catches. Oh, now, did, one did was you in whiff the sun. It? Huh? Did you whiff it kicking? No. No, I didn't I whiff bet it kicking. I bet you whiffed it kicking. No, dude. I batted 900. Oh, because they did the girl roll for you. Uh, the rolls were pretty easy. Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I can't deny that. But I, also, too, we were in this grass, bumpy field, which is another reason why I fell. Uh, blame it on the field. Blame it on the field. No, I can't because I was on the cement later on, and we were playing four square, and I dove for a ball on cement. Oh man, like I haven't played idiot. four square in a solid twenty years. Yeah. Well, we brought it back, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I'd play Foursquare right now. We brought it back like cool beans. Let's bro. just stop this and go play some Foursquare. Hmm. In your I think basement. it's called Four Play. You're upset. That one got me. Yeah, that's upsetting. Yeah. He's hey, upset. I watched a movie last night. This um, is new movie. Yes. Ricky Stenicki. I, yeah, I've heard about this, and I feel like this is a movie that our listeners absolutely need to watch because yeah. this. I feel like this is the type of mu movie that our generation will be talking about for years. So, it, Like Dumb and Dumber. Well, right. So the Farrelly brothers who did Dumb and Dumber, they did like Me, Myself, and Irene. They did a bunch of those classics. Um, one of them, not it wasn't both of them, but one of the Farrelly brothers – was the producer of this movie. And it's called Ricky Stanicki. And essentially the concept is, this is like hell on a hillside level material. I know. I already this texted my a, buddies about it. It's like um, this group of friends as kids almost burn down like this house on a house where they're like trick or treating and there's this house didn't give them candy. So they do like the old burning dog poop bag on the front door. Right. 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 And the people like don't answer the door. <laughs> so the house catches on fire <laughs> and they're like freaking out. And then hell and, of a premise. Yeah. <laughs> so they're freaking out and they like in the heat of the moment, literally take a jacket and write, the name they're trying to come up with a name. They come up with Ricky Stanicki on the inside of the jacket and leave it. So when the police and fire department get there, they're looking for someone named Ricky Stanicki. So yeah. they get, DNA testing didn't exist then. They get off of of being implicated because of this made up person, Ricky Stanicki, and then they continue that lie to you. They use Ricky Stanicki to get them out of all sorts of trouble throughout their entire life, and they've like created this Bible 
of his life. Yeah. Should that we they give can any always more away? It, 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 well, if you've seen the trailer, it like, ends up going bad for them. Right, right. In it's, a hilarious way. And it's, uh, they end up having to hire someone to be Ricky Stanicki <laughs> to like get them out of a bind. And it's John Cena plays this like lounge singer from, um, uh, Atlantic City that has like extremely profane versions of. How was like, John rock. Cena's role in that? Was he funny? He was the entire movie. <laughs> he was the star. So it's like, um, okay. So was this put out by WWE or was this? No, uh, uh-uh, no. And it's um, it's on Amazon Prime. It is not kid friendly at all. It's very profane, but that's mm. a lot of heart, and it is unbelievably funny. Unbelievably funny. Yeah, you said you like. Yeah, there were many times I was cackling, audibly. laughing, and it was normally like even with something funny. If it's just me and my wife, like we're not laughing out loud. Like we'll be, like, <laughs> you know, like a quick little. Ch- we were, like, she was like crying, laughing at points because it's so funny, it's so chaotic, and it's it's just very. Fu- it felt like one of those '90s, late '90s, early 2000s comedies of just chaos, absurd premise all together, and uh, it was just it was kind of refreshing. Like Biodome, yeah. Sure, that's one that you could throw in. That was there. chaos. Right, I mean, one hundred percent chaos. <laughs> Biodome, great, great movie. Yeah, highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen it, if you're not going <laughs> not gonna to give anything away like we did with Ricky Stanicky. But, but it was it's very very funny and like just oh man, I, I can't wait for you to watch it. I want to watch it again because there's so many different like moments that I just want to talk to you about yeah. that are just very Well, we do the show on Mondays, yeah. and The Bachelor apparently comes out on Mondays. And my wife is already, as of 10 a.m. this morning, she has blocked this off. Well, do you we enjoy to- The Bachelor with her? <sighs> You're on camera. Well, in... You, regardless if you enjoy it, you eventually get sucked in. That's just, fair. Just to see if you were right. That's fair. Does that make sense? No, I completely. And I and I'm obsessed with being right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm. This is going to happen, and I just need to see this. Through. That's that's fair. I typically join like so. Bachelor is like when, when there's, there's like dudes, six the, or one eight dude. left. Bachelor is when it's one dude and a bunch yes. of ladies. Yes. You watch Bachelorette also. No. No, misogynist well, over here. No, it's. I mean, it's just less to look at. <laughs> Did you, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, who's who's your your top favorite lady in this season? Since we're on the topic, well, I I don't remember their names. I, I've only watched like okay. four episodes of this. No, I four like okay. Oh, what's her name? Misogyny. Oh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. I could tell you. It's she definitely looks not like, Chelsea though. from Love Is Blind. Is she on this? No. So you're just saying a random well, person from I, another show? Yeah, because I knew her name. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's definitely not John Cena from Ricky Stanicki. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, dude, Love Is Blind was wild this year. Wild. You watch such. Not that I'm uh, any better. No, Love is Blind. I'm telling trash you, television. Love is Blind is my one trash TV that I actually watch from start to finish. What about The Bachelor? No, I, I don't. You're watching it with your wife, you said. No, it's here's the off. deal. My it's wife, appointment television. My thing. wife blocks it off, and we I watch the first one just to see if I like The Bachelor or not. Then yeah. I play, I, I go kill zombies the rest of the season. On Oculus until about six people are left. Do you? Did you? Because I don't care about hot tubs. Do you ever see the show? And this was in the early two thousands, early aughts, as they say, called Joe Millionaire. Uh, it was, so it was kind of a bachelor show, but the twist on this is that all the women thought he was this wealthy. Oh yeah, and then man. it's revealed at the end he, that he wasn't. Yeah. and so he lived like around the. I, he wasn't like. A bum, like he he actually had like a decent job. I'm pretty sure, but he lived like like middle in, class. Yeah, he like lived in. So they're not totally screwed. They're just he like, lived in our area in Virginia Beach, where I was uh in, lived in high school, and we'd see him at the movie gallery a lot, checking out flicks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you know you've not made it. Yeah, Joe Millionaire, <laughs> written them DVDs. <laughs> I'm gonna go get his autograph. I'm gonna sit out the movie gallery. Hey see Joe. If I can see him. Hey Joe. Was his name really Joe? I don't remember. It's been a long time. I, like it's been twenty. Oh, years. you don't remember? Oh, that? yeah, I don't remember a character on something in high school. 
this is a show you are watching tonight. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's one that looks like a supermodel, and I really like her. Uh, okay. Misogyny. Her, <laughs> That's no. what the name of this episode is going to be called. Misogyny with her, degrees. I think it was her Her mom passed away. Now you got to make it like you're trying to make it so I feel bad. That's what you're doing. You're like, I think her mom passed away. Right. That's really why I remember, but she's great looking. She, I mean, she's really good looking. She is. She's nice. She kind of like Cindy Crawford kind of look to her. Specifically Cindy Crawford. But a little bit more like, I don't know what I'm going to say. Misogyny. Um, you want to go to the 15? I'm a patriarchy. <laughs> you want to go to the 15? I would love to, Will. Let's hit the music. Right. That's what I'm supposed to say. All right, you that. say it. I don't care. Hit the music. All right. I said it better. As I do. All right. And we're back from the 15. We did not leave, Will. Cork Pop. Mm. Cork Pop was a bad dude. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something right now, guys. Whatever is on this, number one, the color looks awesome. Looks great. So um, this is... Um, will it reserve? No, it's Will Height Reserve. And I will, I'll tell you a little bit about this, right? So this is a single barrel. Selected in 2023. This is six years aged. Um... And so it comes actually from mm, so pre COVID, twenty twenty three. You said six years. Oh, eight. you're not wrong. I know. Um, so six years, hundred eighteen proof. This is uh, uncut and unfiltered whiskey thief distilling company. And when you do a barrel pick, <laughs> that looks like the whiskey weekend. <laughs> it, I mean, it, they, yeah, there may be a trademark we could file. I mean, it looks just like it. <laughs> it does. Whiskey look. Thief Distilling Company, you're unnoticed. <laughs> yeah. But um, so this is a Watch Hill proper experience. And this is, they they have a, a, a bunch of barrels and you can go pick and do a barrel pick from them. But they're not like all from the same place. They're not all MGP or whatever. They just get what barrels they can and you pick through them. Well, this is a Kentucky straight. So this is my, um, my sister helped me get this bottle. It's her... One of her best friends growing up and still to this day, her husband and his brothers do a barrel pick every year together. They've done like Woodford. They've done some Buffalo Trace stuff. They've every done, year. Every year they do a barrel pick together. Tell me you're a one percenter without telling me you're well, one percenter. there you go. But um, this one, and so their last name is Will Height, And so that's where like you get to do a custom label with them. And it even has, uh, there's a Bible verse on the front, Isaiah 40, 31. Those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So, what translation is that? Doesn't say. So mm. they didn't properly credit it. But, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So they got to do their own like label, Will Height Reserve. And so is one of them named Will and one of them's named Height. No, their last name is Will Height. Oh, both of them. Well, there's like four or five brothers. <laughs> It's not. It's not just two. Okay, so I mean, so. Grease's head. If there's brothers, there's only two of them. Well, because Lord knows I've got a gaggle full of ladies upstairs. Listen, so. <laughs> I don't want to assume that all brothers have the same last name. Okay, that's fair. It's 2024. Fair. I'll I'll let you do that. I know. All right. So, six years old, and I don't. Dude, this looks sick. I've heard speculation. I don't know if this is true or not, but it may be. From a place in Bardstown that's not Willet or Barton. Oh, I was going to say Barton. No. A Barton, as we like to call it. Yeah. In the patriarchy world. Is patriarchy a bad word? So when they talk about the patriarchy, it's not like a curse word. But right, it, that's what I was wondering. But it has a negative connotation, especially nowadays, because when people are referring to like the patriarchy, they're talking about like I didn't know if that was the same dominated. kind of thing as like going up to somebody and calling them the B word. No. Okay. It's not uh, considered a swear word. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it would get a little muddy if you said, you know, Mud you call it the P word. Good Lord. That would be... I, I, no, I'm yeah. just saying that would not right. work well. Yeah, this is where it's going. Classic patriarchy over here. This is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is reminiscent Whoa. of a um, Elijah Craig Look at the match bill, and you'll be able to tell, probably. 
It is on the other side. on the front. Oh yeah, seventy eight percent corn, twelve percent rye, ten percent malted barley. Is that a mash bill that we are familiar? Well, I'm gonna Google it. So I can't remember mash bills. You Unless just, it's like ninety five five rye. Say some more offensive. That one's a, <laughs> say some more offensive things. I don't want to say I haven't really said offensive things. You just dabbled in it. I've yeah, I I there there was a there was a toe that never touched the water. Oh, so this is an interesting um so Elijah Craig right. has seventy eight percent corn. This says ten percent rye and twelve percent malted barley, but this website may have the twelve and the ten reversed. Oh, that's fair. So or the bottle. Who's to say? Will Height, you can't trust Will Height. Well, they didn't write it. Uh, did they? I don't know. But they custom the It does have a it has a very um Elijah Craig barrel proof kind of, of thing going on. Let me go ahead and tell you something right now. Uh-huh. This is six years old, freaking solid. It tastes like ten years old for sure. It, but it's not. It, 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 it's it not over it oaky. Well, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't scream. I am old. No, this just has a ginormous flavor. Oh yeah, big I, bold bourbon. I do not get from Elijah old, Craig. Old triple B, big bold bourbon. I don't get it from Elijah Craig. You don't. Maybe they're not pulling them early enough. <laughs> Elijah Craig, you know what? With that twelve-year age statement you had and you dropped, what you needed to do was cut that in half. No, all you got to do is no, no, no. You just skip six years, Will. It's called the pocket. How do you do that? Well, you do. You you release them at six years, right? That's what we're talking about. And then you release them at twelve. Okay, so like, like so you age up. It's a whole balance. It's called a supply and demand model. I don't understand because it's kind of what we talked about last week. How they're releasing like seven year single barrel. No, now. we were saying eight. Oh right, it was eight. Well, because then eight they is have not that, a sweet spot. That that a one twenty three or or one twenty four is uh, younger. Mm. This is tasty. This is really good. Yeah, solid choice. Good barrel pick, Will Height. And this is uncut straight from the barrel? Yeah, allegedly. What proof is this? 118. 100? Oh, golly. This drinks like a, like a 105. This is crushable. Super crushable. Mm-hmm. This is my new pool pounder for summer 2024. Well... I really want to do a pool pounder. What do you mean? A, a pick that's a pool pounder? Yes. Um, I mean, we've only been talking about it for eight years. We're yeah, coming we, up on our eight We year. haven't found a barrel that was worthy of it, though. Bed pour was almost there. Bed it was pour, almost there. It was almost there. It, it was a heck of a name for it. <laughs> bed pour was Bed good. pour was solid. And that sticker with the eagle sitting there in bed just having a whiskey. Shark repellent, also great. Solid. That was a good barrel I have pick. two bottles of that left, by the way. I have one open and one closed. Oh. Yeah. There's some whiskeys. Kind of like my eye right now. <laughs> one open, one closed. <laughs> You're a weirdo. I am weird. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like this, though. I, I'm, I'm curious at how... How easy the Watch Hill proper experience is to to get a bottle from because if they have barrels like this, these are solid, right? Um, no, they are now. Obviously, like for us, here's the deal. That's for, a Kentucky distillate. They have yeah. other offerings. They have, uh, you know, they might I have assume. MGP. They, yeah, they definitely don't have a lot of that. Probably, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about it. And but I am curious, like for a a private pick. It works because you can customize the label and do stuff like that. But if you're a liquor store, because it, it, um, at the end of the day, it's it's a pretty nondescript looking bottle and, and label. It's not like there's a ton of graphic work. It's not even like the... Uh, it's kingly. It is kingly, but I'm saying I don't know if that would work for a store pick. Like if it's going to a retail store and say it was like Elixir's Finest or something... I don't know if people are going to reach for that because it's it doesn't necessarily grab your eye and it's also not a name you know. That well, you, I mean, you if you've got a sa- if you if you got salespeople on the floor, you can probably move it, especially yeah. with that color and especially in the state of Tennessee when you can open it. If right, I well, that's that. the thing. You have to let people try this one. I feel like because the label situation and because it's like this isn't even a brand. Right, Bill Hyper, you know, like they were able to do what they wanted. I wonder if that's with all their picks. Like, do you have to come up with something or can you just put on it, you know, Whiskey Thief Distilling Company, which still may not get people to necessarily like 
It's almost like they took the Whiskey Weekend logo in Oak and Thieves and made a mashup and started a company. Mm -hmm. <sighs> here's now the, I'm upset. Here's the deal, though. You just <laughs> yeah, I bored you more than you shot it. <laughs> well, I wanted to see the complexity yeah, you need, of the shot. Yeah, you need to understand what you, you're dealing you, with. Yeah, you need to smell it, you need to sip it, and then you need to shoot it. Yeah, Those are the is. three things. Yeah. Smell when I shoot things, I get a lot more like dark chocolate every time. <laughs> oh, let's try it. It's because do you get bitter notes in the back? Oh, of wow. I told you. Yeah, it's, I think it's the speed and the air molecules mixed together. It's like air kisses. You know, you start off, you blow a little I bit. understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A good a little, old warm up. Yeah. Good old warm up fashion. Up. See where we're headed. That's right. So, Will Height. Yeah. Great brand, highly trusted. But they're not trying to sell it. This they're doing some great work. They're doing some great work. Private consumption. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you need a barrel for charity, reach out to Will Height. They will absolutely supply you with a lot of stock. Yeah, they're doing great things. Oh, great things. Great things. <laughs> great things. Um, they should did uh, should have done purple foil at the top. Well, they got purple on there. Listen, I think about the blue. whiskey weekend thing though, we need to tread blue. lightly because if that was in 2000 if this was bottled in 2017, that was pre-whiskey weekend. We could, It wasn't bottled in 2017. Well, you said it's 6 years old. It, was, it wasn't bottled in 20. Barreled. It was barreled in 2017. Right, but that means that's when the actual distillery that made it barreled it. Okay, so we could be in the clear. Oh yeah, maybe we should tread lightly though. I understand. Right. Your, I understand I, we, your concerns, you say, look, dude. You want to take when I have legal concern concerns, <laughs> right? You have to listen because you typically don't have concerns about anything. I don't. Uh, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> No, I did. Oh no! Oh, no, I just, I just feel like that statement could have led me down. <laughs> this would have become further he past heavy mental. A toe. It would have been heavy mental then. Uh, heavy. But the, we would have flipped the switch. Different podcast. Well, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of switches. Will yeah. And we just ha we have to switch them in the right order. You had our buddy Rob on an episode of. Heavy I did. Mental. I'm I did. curious how he got an invite. Him and Dustin Peed. Both got a heavy mental podcast invite. Uh, you have gotten just as much of an invite as Dustin Pete. Rob, I need <laughs> <laughs> Rob was an anomaly. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, we had had a real, we had a pretty big conversation that okay. was just super helpful. And okay, we're talking about influencing and social media and well, Rob's a hustle. Cool guy. I mean, is that episode out yet? I'm editing it. Okay, that's what I was curious because I'm, I can't so. wait to hear it, and so I'm. It I'm, was very good. Yeah, it was very. It was very. Uh, Rob is Rob is very intelligent. So if you were to uh, it threw me off, go into a GIF keyboard or search, yeah, and you do coffee, right? His he, or his, good morning, I think something. Like his that. GIF. It, almost everyone listening, I dare say, has seen our friend Rob. Because he, uh, 100%. he was a Vine star, and it, he has the gif of him in like a bathrobe. It's like a white bathrobe with blue stripes. Standing in a shower. With a giant cup of coffee. Like and, massive mug. And he go, he does like a little like, like tasting lip thing, and then dumps it over his head. And so it's a very widely used gif. It's been... Ellen DeGeneres used it. It's been... Used over a billion times. Over two billion times. Over two billion and times. And that's just on Giphy alone. On Giphy alone, two billion times. Highly recognizable GIF, highly recognizable face. And yeah, you can't forget that face. Has it made a single penny off of the GIF? Like right. there, and I'm sure you guys get into that, but it's like billions with an S. Yeah. So if you no if, money. If you got a penny for each use. Or somehow, if it was okay, monetized. Now you're, now you're getting into a weird, like that, that's like a thousand times more than like Taylor Swift gets for a Spotify stream. Yep, so, so you need to okay. pump the brakes, Will. I just was throwing out a number though, a penny, because it's, right, if you got a penny for a, uh, your thoughts, I get a it. thousand views. Anyhow, it's an interesting thing because everyone knows who he is. Everyone's seen it. Yeah. He, he, he's the guy that everybody knows, but nobody knows. We know him. He's a good dude. We do. Good friend. I throw the, I throw the gif every now and then at work. 
Yeah, just to like pour salt in the wound. Yeah, just to just to flutter the base. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't either. I don't think you want to. Oh man. Well, this was solid. I would say buy this. You can't buy it. Okay. But, but I mean, no, it's this is a solid buy. How much okay, when they bought the whole Obviously, it's not a retail price, but when they bought the barrel and you divide it by how many bottles, what was the cost? I'd have to find that out and get back to you. I don't know the answer. I'd probably guess 50 bucks. Prob- probably around there. Um, my dad muled it across like six states for them. It was great. Great story. Proudest moment of his life. Basically, Palm Sunday. Yeah, just running, running booze. He was like Rapid Roy, that stock car boy, for all you Jim Croce fans out there. Coming up on Easter holiday. Yeah. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this week on the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy yourself some Will Height Reserve. I'm going to hit greens again one more time with it. We're about to go do a virtual barn night. If you're interested in what that means, go over to the podcast's Patreon at patreon.com slash the podcast. P-O-D. C-A-S-K, and you can join there, or you can just send us $5 in the mail, and that's why join the $5 level. You get uh, access to our Discord server. Um, we're trying to build that up. Grease posts a lot. I post some, and we really want uh, engagement there because it's actually a really well um, conditioned platform for our community and sharing. Yeah, and I curate so many great cooking videos on there. Garbage. No reactions. Garbage. No comments. There's there's literally nothing. People are speechless, Grease. Literally speechless. I think it was a response. No, I didn't ask how much it was. So oh, okay. Well, I'll find out later. The one question we had. All right. So go check us out, patreon.com slash the podcast, and join up so you can hang out with us on Zoom calls where we Grease says things even less filtered. Well, if you can imagine. Sometimes shirtless. It hasn't been a it's, it's been, a, been a while. Been a while. It's, it's been a while. But I mean Grease you never know happened. when it might happen. Taking his shirt off. It's been a while since we saw his nipple. <laughs> oh. the, dude, they, they're like dimes. Well, because it's, uh, you get cold real easily. All right, folks, we don't know Jack. But we'll drink it, baby. <laughs> <laughs>